In today's video, we have some offseason rumors we're taking a look at concerning the Toronto Maple Leafs, New York Rangers, and Minnesota Wild, and we have several other news updates, including the list of Masterton Trophy nominees, updates on the Montreal Canadiens possibly hiring a president of hockey operations, Elias Sorokin changing agents, all that and more coming up next. So welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. Now, as I mentioned, we have a variety of news updates and some off-season rumors to take a look at today. So let's dive right in because we have a lot to cover today. Now, first off, I want to start with Elias Sorokin, the potential goalie of the future for the New York Islanders, who's been uh, playing in the KHL for the last number of years, been rumored to coming over and signing with the Islanders. Uh, there's been some talk lately that he may stay in the KHL for another season. Obviously, a lot of that has to do with the fact that the NHL season is on pause right now. Not quite clear when he'll be able to play. And there's also been some talk, obviously, with the NHL changing uh, some rules around player signings that even if some of these teams sign some of their prospects coming over from that league, that they may, may not be able to participate in the uh, finish of the 1920 season once games hopefully resume later this summer. Uh, so if Sorokin can't play and that's pushed back to 2020, 2021, then there's a pretty good chance he'll stay over in the KHL another year. Now, the latest update is that he's changed his North American agent. Uh, he's now under Dan Mills who really seems to have the market on a lot of uh, top Russian prospects, a lot of Russian players that seem to work with Milstein and getting their NHL contracts. Uh, so hopefully that's a positive sign uh, that he'll be able to get something worked out. But I think a lot of that has to do with the fact uh, that obviously the, the league is setting the rules right now. And until the NHL budges on that, uh, we may have to wait another year to uh, get Sorokin over. But uh, will the KHL team that he's with want to push to sign him longer and try to keep him over there it's difficult to say so hopefully it's a positive sign that he's changed agents in north america and will hopefully get him signed to the islanders sooner than later 2020 nhl draft top prospect alexi lafreniere has just been named the chl's top junior hockey player for a second time he joined sydney crosby as being the only other player to have won that award two times of course a lot of these players uh you know go on to win this award get drafted go straight to the nhl but in some of these guys cases where they were having such a high level of success at an early age and in some cases were given exceptional status to join the league at age 15 they've given more time and were able to win this award at a younger age so it's quite an accomplishment for the top draft pick uh, for the 2020 NHL draft uh, whoever wins that draft lottery and is able to uh, get him under their organization will be uh, getting a top player who can be a franchise altering guy so huge news for Lafreniere on this award other news in the NHL include the Masterton Trophy nominees being released by the Professional Hockey Writers Association. Of course, each local chapter nominates a player for their city and their franchise. Uh, so there's 31 nominees right now that will be whittled down to some finalists. I'll put a graphic up here on the screen so you can see uh, who all of the nominees are, one from each team. Uh, and then closer to the award time, we'll find out who the finalists are. But of course, some of the leading contenders have to be Bobby Ryan of the Ottawa Senators. Of course, he had you know a tremendous this uh, story uh, where he was uh, battling addiction, battling alcoholism, uh, left the team, went into rehab, came back and had a tremendous finish to the NHL season, really overcame a lot, really persevered, which is what this award stands for, uh, for perseverance and dedication to hockey. Uh, so I think Bobby Ryan probably is the leading contender, but he does have some competition in there as well. You've also got Steven Johns of the Dallas Stars. Uh, Johns missed a whole season plus half of another one due to, uh, to the concussion issues, came back and was having a pretty solid second second half of the year before the season was paused uh, so he certainly deserves a lot of credit uh, for his comeback and after being out for such a long period of time another notable guy is uh, Oscar Lindblom in Philadelphia of course he's been battling cancer uh, I would think more likely as much as he deserves a lot of credit as well he'd be a more likely recipient maybe when he makes his return but I guess we'll see he certainly deserves a lot of credit though for you know pushing hard to get himself ready to make that comeback so all the best for Oscar and you also have to think about guys like Jay Bowmeister too the St. Louis Blues who obviously suffered uh, you know a severe medical situation on the bench and you know came close to losing his life during play in that scary situation during a Blues game earlier this season of course he hasn't played since and many feel that likelihood that he does end up retiring so again a very notable player but like I said I think Johns and Ryan are the leading contenders just because they've made the comeback and are playing currently in the league but I guess we'll see lots of great stories through the NHL lots of guys that are, are certainly dedicated to the sport dedicated uh, to their craft and have persevered a lot and deserve to be on the ballot here for this award. 
Now, next up, I want to talk about the Montreal Canadiens. There have been some rumors floating around recently that the Habs could be in the market to possibly hire a team president. And that team president would basically be a buffer in between Mark Bergevin and Jeff Molson. Uh, there was some speculation of former Hab and former captain Vincent Danfoos could be that guy. Uh, although there's some of the people out there who commented on that situation really we're not really sure. I mean, some feel Dan Foos would be good at the role, but he really hasn't had uh, any experience uh, leading into being a good candidate, at least you would know of. But I mean, obviously, from all the years playing the league and what everybody has to say about him, uh, many felt that he might be a good fit. Obviously, he understands what it's like to play in that market, understands what it takes to win and all that. So there's certainly a lot of good qualities that he has. But uh, apparently, Jeff Molson kind of put those rumors to rest. Statements here indicating that uh, he has no plans at this time to hire uh, a president of hockey operations and he sang the praises quite highly of a general manager, Mark Bergevin, and how much confidence he has in his ability to lead the team uh, and all that. So clearly, uh, he feels that Bergevin's got everything under control and there's no need to have another voice in there as team president uh, to kind of you know add to the management and uh, structure there in Montreal because there's been a lot of rumblings. So clearly, all the talk of Dan Foos to Montreal, right now, nothing to it. But the, the rumors also did indicate that it might not be immediately, that it might be more likely for next year that Montreal might do this, that there's been some talk and rumblings about it. But I guess we'll have to see. For right now, no plans for Molson to hire a team president. I also want to talk about the New Jersey Devils as well. There's obviously a lot of talk right now going on between their ownership group and their interim GM and coach. There's been talks that the Devils have talked to as many as about eight different coaching candidates. I've seen reports they had it whittled down to about four, but interim GM himself, Tom Fitzgerald, apparently is not in a huge rush. Obviously, they got all kinds of time. The Devils are not going to be participating uh, in the uh, 2014 playoff format. Uh, the next season is rumored to be pushed back a bit. They've got nothing but time to make this right decision. Uh, obviously, it looks as though uh, interim coach Elan Nazardine will be in that role for the foreseeable future. It's hard to say what their plans are, but it's been known all along that Nazardine is in the mix for the permanent coaching job. Uh, but where they have a interim GM, it's kind of you know tricky to say how this goes. But but the ownership group of the Devils, including Josh Harris, are apparently in the market to possibly be buying Major League Baseball franchise the New York Mets. So their priorities right now seem to be kind of in other areas. Not really clear what that means for the Devils. Is there a distraction there? Uh, I'm not sure how focused they are on determining who their permanent uh, people are going to be running this hockey franchise. But uh, clearly, until they have a permanent GM, you would think that they wouldn't be an announcement on a permanent head coach. It only makes sense for it to happen that way. I haven't really heard of any uh, rumblings around other GM candidates being interviewed by the Devils, but it does look as though Fitzgerald's been doing lots of research on the coaching front. So I guess we'll have to remain to be seen, but there's no rush. Uh, it certainly appears like they might kind of wait things out here while before a decision is made, but uh, not really clear when the Devils will decide on uh, Fitzgerald's job, which I think will have to come first before a coach is hired. Now, as I mentioned as well, I want to take a look at some off-season rumblings regarding a few NHL teams. Let's kick things off with the Minnesota Wild and New York Rangers. There's a mailbag article in the New York Post asking Larry Brooks if he felt the Rangers would be a good candidate to go after and trade with Minnesota for defenseman Jonas Brodeen. As we know, the Wild have been rumored to be moving a defenseman, likely either Brodeen or Dumba. That's been in the rumor mill for some time. Uh, the uh, Wild are desperately in search for a top two center iceman. Bill Guerin has made that clear. That's one of his top priorities is to add a top six forward and preferably a top center, which is no easy task to do when he's going to have to trade some value to get value in return and that one of his top defensemen might have to go in order to facilitate that trade now of course it's not quite clear if that was the case who they would want back from the rangers uh, the rangers are well stocked in that department they have a lot of offensive type players they have a pretty good prospect pool right now with lots of good young players who might be a good fit in minnesota but not really clear exactly who they'd be targeting uh, but with the moves that the rangers had to make on their blue line trading brady shea and others uh, obviously they still have some great pieces back there but they could use somebody to play on the left side. Larry Brooks's response to this question in his mailbag article was essentially that Brodeen would be a terrific fit. He's somebody who could play with Jacob Truba, uh, eat up a lot of minutes, play in a variety of situations, and probably would be in a lot of ways very perfect for the role, but he cautioned that the Rangers may not want to go down that road because Brodeen doesn't have a lot of time left on his contract, and he feels that when Brodeen's looking for his next contract when he hits free agency or would be eligible, he's probably going to be up around that seven to $8 million mark, and then it might prove to be too costly for the Rangers at that point. So they might want to go in a different direction. They have some other guys 
on the team like Lindgren or Hayek who could possibly, even Brendan Smith, maybe even play a, a net role to some extent uh, to kind of keep their cost down. Obviously, they're going to have other guys like Tony D'Angelo and Adam Fox are going to be needing a new contract soon. They're going to prove to be a little bit expensive. They get Truba locked up to a lot of money. Bringing in another guy like Brodeen, uh, you know, said as much as it might be a good idea, it might prove difficult to keep him in the fold longer term without moving out another player. Now, obviously, uh, Fox, D'Angelo, as well as Truba all play the right side. So maybe one of them, like possibly D'Angelo would be my guess could be moved. I mean, they've got some guys there like Fox and D'Angelo both are proven to be very productive and they might not be getting the amount of time, ice time as well as power play time that they both would want, especially with a guy like Truba and Mixer as well. So wouldn't be shocking and maybe see the Rangers make a move in that regard because uh, that blue line is obviously proven to be much improved. These young guys are pretty solid and they might prove to be too expensive here in the short term. But as much as Jonas Brodeen to the Rangers makes a lot of sense uh, from the Rangers perspective because I'm not really clear who the Wild would want. What would they have to give up to make that happen? Um, but it might prove to be too expensive long term just from a cap perspective for New York. So it wouldn't be surprising to see them maybe look in a different direction uh, except, or go with one of their own younger players to try to fill that role on a cheaper level. But the Rangers are coming a long way with their prospect pool. They've improved drastically and I do think they could be a dangerous team to watch in the 2014 playoff format. And if they end up in the draft lottery, if they lose to Carolina, uh, which they, you know they also have multiple picks in the first round, they could still get some pretty decent talent regardless of where they end up here and make that team even stronger longer term. Of course, you can't rule out a lead Anderson trade there was some talk that they might try to bring him back where they can have a bigger roster for this 2014 playoff format that they might try to get Leas Anderson to come back to North America and be a part of the team for that I'm not really clear if there's been any updates or what where that stands but there was some talk on that I think probably about a week or so ago there were some rumblings that they might be looking to do that but clearly Anderson wants a fresh start somewhere else don't think at this point he's going to be able to fetch a whole lot of a return given the fact that he's uh, not been able to establish himself at the NHL level. Uh, if he were to do something similar to Jesse Pugliarvi and play in Sweden a little longer, that might be possibly what's best for his overall development, but difficult to say. The Rangers do have a lot of talent, though, and have some tough decisions to make, including on their blue line, but not sure that Brodeen really answers their questions longer term. Now, as I mentioned as well, there's some talk about the Toronto Maple Leafs. There's a recent article by Jonas Seigel in The Athletic talking about their potential plans for the future and a potential trade of Casperi Kapanen in this, this uh, potential offseason. Now, that also included uh, some a brief interview with Kapanen asking uh, what his thoughts on the situations would be. And as he mentioned himself, he didn't think the Leafs were wanting to get rid of him. Uh, but at the same time, he understands it's a business and you know sometimes you have to make moves to improve your organization. And really, I agree with that. I don't think the Leafs are looking to move Kapanen, uh, but at at the same time, they need help on their blue line. They need to trim some salary, which is kind of a lot of the comments and points that Seigel makes in this article. And he's been in their organization for some time. He came over from Pittsburgh and they Phil Kessel trade. That's how long he's been a prospect in their organization, developed into a regular player the last few years. And it seems to be coming along, but at the same time, he's lower in the depth chart, uh, which from a lot of these other top players, I mean, Matthews, Tavares, Marner, Nylander, likely are not going anywhere. Uh, so, you know, to move a player out to trim some salary and help the blue line you know it's going to be a guy like a Kapanen or a Kerfoot or an Andreas Janssen and really I think Kapanen is the most intriguing I do agree with that I've stated it on this channel on multiple locations that if the Leafs are going to trade a forward to make room to help the blue line then I think Kapanen probably is the guy that goes he's got a pretty, pretty reasonable contract he's proven that he can be you know a, a pretty good offensive player he can play in the penalty kill uh, which is desirable to a lot of teams and I think he's got more of an attractiveness than a Janssen or a Kerfoot and if I'm the Leafs I probably want to hang on to Kerfoot anyway where he can play center. Janssen's coming off a pretty serious significant injury so I think the interest in him is going to be low at least in the short term. Uh, I think teams would probably want to see him get back and see how he does uh, before making an acquisition uh, and that regard at least I would think so. So as much as I agree with the article that they should be cautious on trading because he's still relatively young and could still prove to be a really solid top six forward whether it be in Toronto or somewhere else uh, I do think that they need help on their blue line and I think there's a lot of pressure on Toronto to get uh, further ahead in kind of a win now mode right now. Uh, they have other things they need to worry about as well in the not too distant future. They've got guys like Freddie Anderson and Zach Hyman are going to need contracts within a year. The, the organization both views them as pretty valuable. Hyman, even though he's not a big time offensive player, has proven to be a pretty solid member of that top six. And really this year after he returned from injury, he was having a pretty solid offensive run. One of the
one of his better runs in the NHL after he returned from injury. And even though Freddie Anderson, I know there's a lot of mixed opinions out there. I mean, clearly uh, he hasn't been able to get over the hump and really help this team have a ton of playoff success as of yet. But the next question would be is if you don't re-sign Anderson to an extension, then who's going to take over between the pipes is not really clear. I'm not sure that Jack Campbell is capable of that being a, a long-term starter. They don't really have a, a ton of other goalie prospects ready right now. They do have some interesting prospects. I'll give them that, but they're not really, you know, at the point where they appear to be NHL ready yet either. So not really clear what they would do uh, in that regard. Uh, and not really clear exactly what Anderson's going to want for a contract, but it's possible that that contract could be pretty tricky. And not only are those two guys going to be needing new deals, but in two years time, Morgan Riley's contract is up and clearly he's their top defenseman they're going to want to extend him too and if we have a flat salary gap for a few years which is something that is very very possible that's really going to make things difficult for a team like Toronto to get all these players under contract because uh, clearly when a lot of these big time deals were signed we know that they factor in a lot of future projections and cap increases and things like that determining how they can afford to keep everybody and that's really going to throw a, a big time curveball at them to help make that happen so some players are likely going to have to unfortunately leave town to make it all work in some reasonable contracts like Kapanen would be easier to move and still have value would make a lot of sense to be able to do that you're never going to be able to get uh, a lot of help on the blue line without doing that I mean you can't really go to free agency and sign a big time player because there's no room without money going out and obviously He's a prime candidate. So I do agree with the sentiment from the article that the Leafs need to be careful. They shouldn't give up on a young player like him too soon. But at the same time, I do think if they're going to really try and push hard to win a Stanley Cup in the next couple of years, they need help on that blue line. That's obvious. And they have some other contracts here that are going to prove to be probably a little bit more higher priority to get signed than a guy like Kapanen that he might have to be the guy to go if he can bring back the right return. But we'll see. I know Kyle Dubas is pretty smart at his job, and I'm sure that uh, he's analyzing these situations to determine how he can best get this team ready for a potential cup run here in the near future. So we'll have to be remain to be seen. But in your opinion, the Leafs need help on the blue line. I think we can all agree on that. That's pretty obvious. Is Kapanen the guy to go to make that happen? Or what do you think they should do in order to be able to make it work with their tight cap situation? Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments and we'll continue the conversation. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing and turning on your notifications so you don't miss any future content and give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. I'd appreciate it if you did. As always, thank you for watching and I will catch you next time.